Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, Jennifer Marie, where I teach you different tech tips, teach you how to make money online and how to become a work from home freelancer. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to transform text into images. This is a DALI 2 AI art tutorial. I'm going to teach you step by step how you can type in an idea and transform that idea to digital art. And you can use the art you produce in works that you want to sell on platforms like Etsy, create t-shirt designs to sell, use it in your thumbnails for YouTube or in graphic design projects, and so much more. So let's get into it. First of all, what is DALI 2? DALI 2 is an AI model developed by OpenAI that can generate high resolution images from textual descriptions. So essentially, you will type in a prompt here, a text prompt, for example, an impressionist oil painting of sunflowers in a purple vase, and DALI will create that image for you based on whatever you ask. This is not a search engine. It's not searching for an image exactly like your image. It's creating it with the data that it already has. So the most important thing when you're using DALI is to have excellent prompts. So an excellent prompt for DALI 2 could be a clear, detailed, and creative description of an image or object that does not exist. For example, create an image of a futuristic car that runs on clouds and has a rainbow paint job. Well, I asked DALI to create exactly that, and it came up with these images. And again, all of these images are unique. If you want to try, you can put in this exact same prompt and you'll see that you will have different versions of this as well. So before I show you step-by-step -step how to create an account and sign up and use Dolly, I want to briefly talk about the best prompts to use in Dolly 2 and how to get the best images. So add as much detail as possible. Discuss this subject in detail and any other objects in the image. Mention colors you want, imagery in the background, emotions, and mood. You can also include a desired art or painting style or in the style of a specific artist. Let's say you want something in the style of Van Gogh. You can also experiment with tags like digital art, ultra realistic, 3D render, cartoon, illustration, etc. So let's get into it and show you how to sign up and use Dolly 2. Okay, so this is the Dolly 2 website. I will link you to this in the description below this video. You can see it says Dolly 2 is a new AI system that can create realistic images and art from a description in natural language. You can scroll down and get some ideas of the types of things you can create, but we're just going to log in or sign up. If you already have an account with OpenAI, you should just be able to log in. So you will have to enter your password, and then you may have to verify your email again and enter your first and last name and click continue. Also make sure to verify your phone number and click send code, then type in the code and press enter. So here's the initial screen, welcome to Dolly. You're going to click continue and you can see here that you will get 50 free credits during your first month and 15 free credits will refill every month after that. You can always buy additional credits. So you have one month to use them and the credits do not roll over. So make sure to use your 50 free credits in the month or else you'll lose them. So basically you use one Dolly credit for a single request, generating images through a text prompt, an edit request, or a variation request. So each time you ask Dolly to do something, it costs you one credit. Now, one thing very important I want to show you is that you get the same set of rights, including commercial use, regardless of whether an image was generated through a free or paid credit. That means that when you generate an image using Dolly, you have commercial rights to that image. So that means that you can use these images in personal projects and in commercial projects. So if you want to sell these images on different platforms or incorporate them into your work, you are free to use them. So here is the Dolly interface and Dolly can basically create, edit, or modify images. So the interface is really simple. You can just enter your text command, which is called a prompt, and send it to the AI system by clicking generate. So I'm going to show you how to do this. First, let's look at these examples. If you go down, you can get some ideas. For example, this one, a photo of a white fur monster standing in a purple room, an expressive oil painting of a basketball player dunking, an armchair in the shape of an avocado. Now make sure to review the prompts for how each of these were created because you're going to get some ideas. You can see some say digital art at the end. 
or they tell the painting style as we discussed earlier. So let's try something simple. A futuristic neon lit sign in the shape of a heart. Enter. Now this will cost me one credit. So if I'm at 50, now I'm at 49. And you can see it has generated four different images. Now these aren't very special. They're not really exciting images. So let's try something a little different. Now in my previous video, I made OpenAI write me an essay on how Prince Harry is basically the British version of the Tiger King. So let's ask this to create Prince Harry as the Tiger King and add ultra realistic and click generate. And as Dali is generating your image, you get these tips at the bottom here, and I recommend paying attention to them. You can see here it says, add digital art for striking and high quality images. Adding these little tags can sometimes completely change the way your image looks. And you can see these, these are absolutely unreal. I mean, I love this one right here. So what you can do if you want to try variations of that same image is you can click on variations right here. That will cost you another credit. So click on that and it's going to come up with some variations of that image. You can see it's come up with four different variations of the image. Now, these ones are starting to get kind of crazy. They almost look like an elf or a gnome or something. So I actually just prefer the original one. So to download these images, you can just click on it on the image and then you can click on the download icon. Another way to download is to click on edit and then click on download again. Now you can see that the image is 1024 by 1024 pixels, and we're always working with a square shape. So let's try something else. A 3D render of a heart-shaped bumblebee flying above a field of red tulips. Generate. So you can see here they've generated four images, um, and you can see it's not exactly what I asked for. In the one image, the tulips are actually in the shape of hearts, and I don't really see a heart-shaped bumblebee. I was hoping that his bum would be in the shape of a heart, but they're quite cute in any case. Let's try something else. A dog sitting under a yellow umbrella on a stormy night outside in the rain. Now this time I haven't asked it to do any style. I'm just letting it do whatever it wants, but I'm making sure to talk about my subject, where my subject is positioned. I'm talking about the background because I don't want it to be blank. And I'm also mentioning colors that I want in the image. And you can see it's come up with these really cute series of a little sad little dog under an umbrella, which I think are super cute. Okay, so now I've put in this prompt, generate an image of a storybook castle in the architectural style of Gaudi with a princess standing on the balcony outside. The sun should be setting and the castle should be surrounded by snow. The image should convey a mystical fantasy and magical tone suitable for a children's audience. So this is extremely detailed. And let's see what Dali comes up with. And I think some of these are just beautiful. Like, look at these. And if you are proficient in Photoshop, you can make these even better. So another thing you can do with Dali is you can click on variations and that will tell Dali you want to create different versions of that image. So you can see that Dali has generated four additional images that are all variations of this original image. And every time you click on variations, it will cost you one credit. So just be aware of that. And remember you have 50, free credits your first month. Now I want to show you something else that's really cool that you can do. So I asked Dali before to create a vibrant portrait painting of a gummy bear wearing a beret in front of the Eiffel Tower. And I'm gonna click on one of these images and let's say I want to make some edits. I want him to be wearing a little tuxedo. I'm going to click on edit. Then at the bottom here, you can see you have different tools. We're going to click on the eraser tool. And I'm going to erase around his body and make sure to erase enough of the area so that if you want to fill it with something, there's enough space for it to fill. So I'm just going to erase his body. And then at the top here, you can see that it says, describe the entire desired image in the generation frame. So I'm going to put wearing a bow tie and a tuxedo and then click generate. And you can see that it's come up with several different options for me to choose from. So down here, if you click on the arrows, you can see this cute little suit he has. You can click next and you can see the little options it's come up with. I really like the first one, so I'm just going to click accept on that. And then I can click on the download icon and download my new image. Now let's try to erase his beret and I want to add a crown instead. So again, I've clicked the eraser tool. I've erased his beret. I wanna make sure to have enough space for a crown. 
and I'm going to put wearing a king's crown with jewels and then click generate. You can see it's generating and again I have a series of different little crowns to choose from. I like the little crown that shows his ears. And then when you find one that you like, again you can just click accept and then download it. Again, every time you click edit, it does cost you one credit, so just keep that in mind. So over at the side here, you can browse through all of the different generations that you have created. They're saved on the right. And another cool thing that you can do is you can click upload. And you can upload an image of yours that you want to create image variations of. So I'm going to upload this picture of a cityscape. Make sure not to upload photos of people without their consent. And just be careful with what you upload. So then you have to crop the image. So choose the square that you like and click crop. Then you can either click edit image and do what we did previously. Maybe you want to change an original image of yours, or you can click generate variations. So Dali is going to change up your image and create some cool variations of your image. And what's neat about this is it allows you to create AI art with images that you originally own. So you know that there aren't going to be other images that are similar to that image if you're worried about that. So you can see here, this is my original image. And you can see that it's created some really cool, almost like post-apocalyptic sort of variations of my image, which I really like. And another thing you can do is on the top, you can click on collections and you can create your own private or public collections. So if you click create collection, you can give it a name. Let's put children's illustrations, create collection, and you can choose to make it private or not. So then your saved images will appear here. And now if you click on history, you can see all of your generations and you can choose one and click save, save to collection, and then you can choose to save it to a collection that you created or create a new collection to save it as. So let's say I want to save this in my city collection and click create collection, and you can go through and do that with all of your favorite images and categorize them as you like. Now, another thing I want to show you is at the bottom of all of these images, you can see there's the Dali watermark, which is like this little rainbow. Now you are allowed to remove this watermark. Dali has said there's no issues. You don't have to keep that watermark in your images. And if you're planning on publishing these or using them in commercial projects, it's important that you do erase this watermark. You could just crop it out, but then you'll lose some of your image. So I want to show you how you can remove this watermark completely for free. We're going to use a software called PhotoP, which is photop.com. I will link you to this in the description below this video. And it's basically like Photoshop, but you don't have to even create an account. You just have to do this on the website. So we're going to click open from computer and upload the image that we want to remove the watermark from. And click on view and click on zoom in and scroll down to the bottom. Then we're going to click on the spot healing brush. And all you have to do is brush over the watermark. And that is going to instantly erase it for us. It's basically going to fill in the gaps and intelligently choose different colors and match up the pixels so that it looks like it was always a part of the image. And you can see it's done a perfect job of that. And to save it, we can click file and we can click export as PNG or JPEG or whatever. You can give it a name and then click save. And there you have it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this DALI tutorial. I have been having so much fun with this. And what's amazing is that you do get free credits every month, so you don't even have to invest money if you just want to play around to begin with. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comment section below. Make sure to like this video and subscribe for more tutorials like this one.